So in this lecture, I'd like to talk about Hund's rule, which is used whenever we talk about electron configuration of atoms. Now before we get into Hund's rule, let's recall the following fact. Opposite charges attract and like charges repel, and they do so according to Coulomb's law, which is given by the following formula. The force that either charge feels due to the other charge is given by constant K times charge of 1 times charge of 2 divided by distance between them squared. So if I take two electrons, Q1 and Q2, a distance R apart, this electron, this charge, Q2, will feel a force due to this charge, Q1, the same charge, and this force will be in this direction. And this force is given by this law. Likewise, this charge, Q1, will also feel a force due to this charge, Q2. And the force will be in the opposite direction with the same magnitude. And it's also given by this equation, Coulomb's law. So what Coulomb's law says if, is the following. If we place two electrons next to each other, they will repel. They will create repulsion forces. So, this leads into the following fact. Placing electrons into the same orbital in a subshell will create repulsion forces. And this explains two ideas. This is why a maximum of two electrons can go into an orbital. Because if we place three, four, or five electrons into the same orbital, this will increase our force dramatically, creating a lot of repulsion forces, creating a lot of repulsion. And that means this idea explains uh, the Pauli exclusion principle, which states that a maximum of two electrons can be placed into any given orbital. Now, this principle also explains Hund's rule. And what Hund's rule states is the following. It says that electrons will not go into an occupied orbital, occupied by some electron, until all the orbitals within that subshell are already filled. So, for example, let's look at the electron configuration of nitrogen. And it's the following. Two electrons are placed into the 1s orbital. Two electrons are placed into the 2s orbital. Right? We're not placing three electrons into our s orbital or four electrons because only a maximum of two electrons can go into any given orbital because of this principle that we mentioned above. Now, let's look at our p orbitals. Remember, there are three p orbitals. And what Hunt's rule tells us is that before we add two electrons into any orbital, first all the orbitals must be filled with at least one electron. And that's exactly why we first add one electron to the px orbital, <coughs> then we add the second electron to the py orbital, and then we're adding the third electron into the pz orbital to give us a total of 2 plus 2, 4, plus 3, 7 electrons. This nitrogen has 7 protons and 7 electrons in its neutral state. Now let's look at oxygen. Oxygen has eight protons, so it has eight electrons. So let's show the electron configuration according to Hund's rule. So two electrons are placed in 2s, and two electrons are placed into the 2s, right? So that's because of the Pauli exclusion principle. Once again, it states a maximum of two electrons will go into any orbital. Next, we begin filling our p orbitals. We have three p orbitals, and now we have four electrons. So first, we distribute the three electrons the following way. We place one into P, one into Y, and then one into Z. And now, since all of them are filled, my fourth electron will go into filling completely this orbital, this PX orbital. For example, if I dealt with the next atom, if I had one more electron, i place it into this Y. And if I had one more electron, I place it into my Z and I get a noble gas configuration. So, Hund's rule can be represented in the following graphic way. So let's look at nitrogen. So here's my energy axis and here's just my X axis. Now this bar represents my 1s orbital. 
This black bar represents my 2s orbital. The reason this one is lower than this one is because 1s orbital is at a lower state, energy state, than the 2s orbital. And so the 2s is a bit higher. Likewise, the 2px and, and uh, the 2px, uh, 2py, and 2pz are higher than either this guy and this guy. That means they will be higher. And these guys are at the same level. So that means they will be at the same level. So now, when I place electrons, I place them in the following way. The upward um, arrow represents uh, the electron spin of plus one half. The downward arrow represents the electron spin of negative one half. So first I draw my up arrow, my down arrow, and I finished with the 1s. Next, I put two electrons into my 2s, upward arrow, downward arrow. And finally, I put one electron in each. So I begin with the plus one half. So upward, upward, and upward. And now I'm done. This is my graphic representation of Hund's rule for nitrogen. Now let's look at the Hund's rule, the graphic representation for Hund's rule for oxygen. So we start by drawing the same bars and now we start filling our uh, orbitals. So up, down, up, down, up, 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 and then I take my fourth electron and final electron and put it into my 2x. So I draw a down one because according to our rules, we can't have electrons that have the same spin in the same orbital. If we put two electrons to the same orbital, they must always have opposite spins. So up and down. And this is Hund's rule. 